Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Gavin Lon Digital. I'm Gavin Lon. So, we have now written our MVC web application. If you have come this far, well done. You are now able to build your own web applications from start to finish using C Sharp associated web technologies and EF Core. However, there is no point leaving our web applications hanging around on our local machines. We want to expose our web applications to the world. So, how can we do this? I think you know. We can publish our web applications to the cloud. So, in this tutorial, we are going to publish the web application that we have created during this course to Azure Cloud. This is the penultimate tutorial in this video series. I'll release the final video soon, which will present a summary of what we have achieved by going through this video series. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future releases. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee for creating this course, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Azure, but for those of you who are new to Azure and don't yet have an Azure account, I'll briefly go through how you can set up an Azure account for free. So the first thing you need to do is create a Microsoft account. To create a free Microsoft account, it is as simple as navigating within your browser to the Microsoft website and registering for a free Microsoft account. I won't go into the detail of the registration process as it is very straightforward. The next step is to navigate within your browsers to the Azure website. Here, you'll need to provide the Microsoft account credentials that you'll have once you have registered for a Microsoft account. Note that in order to sign up for an Azure account, you'll also need to provide the details for a valid debit or credit card. But don't worry, this doesn't mean that you'll be charged. Azure only charges you for the resources that you use. You will also receive $200 of credit when you sign up for free. In this video, we are going to publish our web application to Azure and then once we have tested our application, we can simply delete the resources that are created on Azure so you won't be charged at all. In this video, I'll show you how we are able to publish our web application to Azure and then how we can also remove all the resources from Azure associated with the relevant published web application once we have finished testing our application on Azure. So I'm not going to go into the details of registering for your free Azure account, as this is a very straightforward process. You only need your Microsoft account credentials as well as details for a valid debit or credit card. Once you have an Azure account, you can log on to Azure with your associated Microsoft account credentials. We are going to publish our web application through Visual Studio. In order to do this, we must ensure that we have logged on through Visual Studio with the Microsoft account credentials associated with our Azure account. And that's it. Once we have a valid Azure account and we are logged on with the appropriate Microsoft account credentials, we can now publish our web application to the cloud. So I've already logged on through Visual Studio using my Microsoft account credentials. Once we have published our web application to Azure, this means our web application will be available to anyone in the world to consume. So this is a very powerful facility to have at our fingertips. So let's go through the steps of how we can publish our web application through Visual Studio to Azure Cloud. So the first step is to right click on our project node within the Visual Studio Solution Explorer like this. Then we can select the menu item labeled Publish. Then for the target, where we wish to publish our web application, make sure the top item in the list is selected in the dialog presented to us, i.e. the list item labeled Azure. Then let's click the Next button. Now for the specific target, let's select Azure App Service in brackets Windows. Very basically, what this means 
is that by creating an app service, Azure is going to create and manage the infrastructure needed for hosting our web application. Azure App Service lets you create apps faster with a one-of-a-kind cloud service to quickly and easily create enterprise-ready web and mobile apps for any platform or device and deploy them on a scalable and reliable cloud infrastructure. So you can see that this is an incredibly powerful service provided by Azure. All of the necessary infrastructural elements is created and managed by Azure and our web application will be accessible to the world via the internet. Let's click the next button. So now we are being prompted to create a new app service. So let's leave the first field set to our default Azure subscription. The next thing we need to do is create an app service instance. As you can see in this list, we do not currently have any app service instances. So to create an app service instance, let's click the plus button here. So the name field at the top of this dialog is very important because the name we enter here will become part of the URL for our web application. We need to provide a unique name for our app service instance. I'm going to use the name TechTree Dev. If your name is deemed as not unique, this will be flagged and you'll need to enter a name that is unique within Azure. We obviously need to provide a unique URL for our web application. We could leave the resource group field at its default setting and Azure will create a new resource group of this name to house the resources of our app service instance for us. I'm going to name my resource group rg-techtree. You'll see later on in this video that a resource group consolidates associated resources under one umbrella, making it easy to manage the associated resources from within Azure Portal. We'll log on to Azure Portal later in this video. The Azure Portal allows you to build, manage, and monitor everything from simple web apps to complex cloud applications in a single unified console. The next field we need to address is labeled hosting plan. In order for us to create an app service instance, we need to create an app service plan. This field will allow us to choose the appropriate app service plan that suits our needs. An app service plan defines a set of compute resources for a web app to run. Basically, whichever app service plan we select determines how much resources will be available for our web application. As you can imagine, the greater amount of resources that we have available for our web application, the greater the cost will be. So let's click the new link here. Here we can name our hosting plan or leave it at its default name. Then for our location field, we can choose where in the world we want our web application to be hosted. Then for the size field, we can choose the amount of resources we want to make available for our web application. As mentioned, this will proportionately affect the cost associated with the hosting of our web application on Azure. So let's choose the free option here. Then let's press the OK button. So we are now ready to create our app service. So let's click the Create button. This will take a bit of time because Azure is provisioning the appropriate resources for our app service. Great, and let's click the Finish button. So you'll see here that Visual Studio has detected that our web application has a SQL Server database dependency. So the next step is we need to configure a SQL Server database for our web application on Azure. We can start this process by clicking the Configure link here. In this dialog, let's leave the list item labeled as Azure SQL Database selected. Then let's click the Next button. So you can see that we don't have any SQL databases in our list. So we need to create a SQL Server database. Let's start this process by clicking this plus button here. 
let's leave the database name at its default value. We can leave the subscription and the resource group fields as they are. The next step is to create a database server. So let's click the appropriate new link. Let's leave the database server name at its default value. Then we need to choose a username and password for our database server. Make a note of these credentials as we'll need them in a bit. So let's choose an appropriate username and password. Then let's click the OK button. We can now click the Create button, and this may take a bit of time as Azure provisions the appropriate resources. we must enter the appropriate SQL Server credentials. Great, and let's click the Finish button. So we have now successfully configured a SQL Server database for our web application on Azure. If you have gone through this course, you'll know that we have used the code-first approach in designing our database. So we want Entity Framework Core to run the appropriate migrations on Azure when our web application is published. If you'll recall, one of our migrations contains code to create an admin account within the appropriate SQL database. We'll need these admin credentials in a bit when we test our application when it is running on Azure. Before we publish our web application, we need to update an appropriate setting so that our migrations will run when our web application is published to Azure. So to do this, let's click the edit link here. Then on the publish dialog, select the Settings tab here. Then wait while it discovers our database context. Great, so let's now click the down arrow next to the Entity Framework Migrations label. Then check the checkbox labeled Apply this migration on Publish. Then click the Save button. So we are now one click away from publishing our web application to Azure. So to publish our web application to Azure, let's click the Publish button. So we'll need to wait a while while our web application is being published. And then our web application is launched within our browser, and we can see that our web application has successfully been published to Azure. Excellent. So we don't have any courses in our fresh new SQL Server database that resides on Azure. So let's log in to our web application now running on Azure with the admin credentials that have been added through the appropriate migration.
let's create the C-sharp for beginners course within the system. Let's create a tutorial within the C-Sharp for Beginners category named Introduction to C-Sharp. Oops, we haven't yet created our media types. So let's create the appropriate media types. Then let's create our Introduction to C-Sharp tutorial within our database. Let's create the appropriate content. So if you'll recall, we need to embed the video within our web application for an item of content when the item of content contains a video. So we must copy the appropriate URL for embedding a YouTube video within a website from the relevant video on YouTube. We can get the appropriate URL by copying the code generated for us by YouTube when we click this menu item. We can then copy the appropriate URL to our clipboards like this. We can now paste the URL into our video link field. If we want our video to play automatically, we need to appropriately add the autoplay and mute parameters to the end of the URL. Then let's save our content. Excellent. For good measure, let's add another course. Let's add the advanced C-sharp course. Excellent. Let's register a new member. We'll add an appropriate registration dialog heading in a bit through Visual Studio and then publish our modification to Azure through Visual Studio. Great. So we are now able to make code modifications through Visual Studio and publish our modifications directly to Azure. So for example, we have not yet added an appropriate heading for the registration dialog. So let's appropriately update the underscore user registration partial view with the appropriate code that includes a font awesome icon and the text register for the registration dialog heading.
Let's save our changes. Let's publish our changes to Azure. So now that we have created an appropriate publish profile for publishing our web application, we can publish modifications to our web application now hosted on Azure. So you can see that the publish profile that we have just created within Visual Studio is selected within the appropriate list. We can now click the publish button to publish our changes to Azure. Excellent. So let's log on to Azure using our Microsoft account credentials. Let's go to the Azure portal. If we navigate to resource groups, we can see that within our resource group list, we have the resource group that we created through Visual Studio for our web application. If we click on the resource group, we can see all of its associated resources. So because we have grouped our resources within one resource group, we are able to delete all associated resources in one easy step. We can simply click the appropriate delete button here. Azure will take a bit of time to carry out our delete operation. We can see here now that the resource group and associated resources no longer exist on Azure, so we have in effect ensured that we don't inadvertently be charged for resources that we don't want on Azure. The next video in this video series will be the final video for this course entitled Let's build an ASP.NET Core MVC web application on .NET 5. Well done for those of you who have completed this course. The knowledge you have gained is very valuable. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future releases. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may gain value from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. The latest code can be found on GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. Thank you and take care.